Hey guys, D Mensch Master Studios here. How y'all doing? Thank you guys so much for 100 subscribers on this channel. This is just an absolutely amazing milestone for me. I know that 100 subscribers may not seem like much in YouTube overall, but against me personally, this is just absolutely amazing and incredible that I'm actually here at 100 subs. And I just want to thank you guys so much, honestly, for this. Just the success on my shorts and videos has been absolutely amazing. And again, I just wanted to thank you guys like I did during my announcement video for this. So just again, thank you so much. And to mark this occasion, I decided that I was finally going to share with you guys my personal top 10 favorite Ninjago character. So let's get into this whole thing. Number 10, The Overlord. The Overlord is basically the whole main overall antagonist that we have when it comes to the show, and I personally think that the Overlord is a really cool and great character all things considered. I like the fact that he's in this constant, endless battle against the forces of light because he's immortal and he's constantly trying to do whatever he can to destroy the balance and try and take over Ninjago. That's definitely something pretty interesting. Plus, I also like the fact that he was able to return during the events of Season 3, and as we know, he's going to be returning during the events of Season 16 as the Crystal King, and I cannot wait to see him in the show, actually. Plus, at the same time, I like the fact that when it comes to the Overlord, he's just obsessed with prophecies and destiny, and he's just trying to constantly move towards these things and everything. That's definitely something pretty cool, I think, and something that we don't often see when it comes to Ninjago villains. So just, yeah, the Overlord overall, I think that he is a really, really great villain, all things considered. Numbers 9 through 6, I'm going to be talking about in this one section. Otherwise, I'd basically just be repeating myself four times over, honestly, guys. And when it comes to numbers 9 through 6, I am talking about four of the ninja. Number 9 is Nia, number 8 is Cole, number 7 is Jay, and number 6 is Kai. I really like all the ninja, and I think that they are all really great and well-done characters, honestly. I also like the fact that when it comes to each of the ninja, when it comes to one major focus season they have, they all go through some kind of personal character arc with them, just learning something pretty great by the end of the season, and I think it's done pretty well. When it comes to Nia, there's obviously Seabound with her learning about difficult choices and what that can mean in order to make difficult choices where there's no right answer. That was definitely something pretty cool. You have Cole during Season 13 with him overcoming his insecurities that he wouldn't be as good a warrior as his mom, which allowed him to unlock the Spinjitzu Burst and defeat the Skull Sorcerer. That was something pretty cool. There was Jay during Skybound with him just trying to be less of the comic relief character and showing that he can do stuff and save people and everything. That was definitely something pretty neat to see. And when it comes to Kai, it's really more like stuff all over the show, really, with him just trying to be less influenced by his emotions and everything and just thinking before he acts. And hey, that's definitely something pretty cool to see. Again, I really, really like all the ninja. I think that they are pretty great. And you may have noticed I left two off. And well, spoiler for the rest of this list, they are much higher on this list. Number five, Lord Garmadon. Garmadon was the OG big bad of the show. And just Garmadon is great considering how much he's changed over the events of the show. Initially, during the pilot season, he was this mysterious and dark presence who was running the whole Skullican army, trying to get all four golden weapons so he could escape. And we didn't know all that much about him, really, other than just he was evil and we was brother. That was definitely something pretty nice to just set up later on. When it came to season one, we got something really interesting when it came to Garmadon. With him being evil and wanting to take down the ninja, but at the same time, he was allying himself with the ninja, but it was only because Lloyd, his son, was captured by the Serpentine. And it was something pretty interesting to see this father and son dynamic between Lloyd during the events of Season 1, albeit brief. Then Season 2 came around and kind of just turned Garmin on into a generic bad guy who wanted to take over all of Ninjago, but he did become a good guy by the end of the season, so that was something pretty cool. And during seasons 3 and 4, we got a chance to see Sensei Garmadon with him as a good guy fully helping out the ninja. That was definitely something really cool to see, honestly. Then he unfortunately was sacrificed at the end of season 4 and went to the Curse Realm, and we only ever saw him briefly after that. But then the Oni trilogy came around, and, and things changed drastically for Garmadon. 
I wasn't the biggest fan of the Oni trilogy overall, but Garmadon was something that I really, really liked when it came to the Oni trilogy, honestly. During Season 8, we got to see this fully evil and destructive Garmadon who wanted to do nothing but take over Ninjago and clearly didn't really care about anyone, even Lloyd, his own son, and just... The fight with Lloyd and Garmadon in Cryptarium Prison is still my favorite battle to this day. It is absolutely amazing. Season 9 then came, and we got a chance to see Garmadon as the Emperor of Ninjago and just see how bad things were with him as the ruler. It was definitely something interesting to see. And during in Season 10, March the Oni, you know, Garmadon starts down the path of becoming a good guy, or at the very least, slowly going away from the side of evil, actually, which is definitely something pretty interesting to see. And I cannot wait to see what we do get when it comes to Garmanon during the events of Season 16. And I am really glad that he is back during Crystallize. And hopefully we get a chance to see Sensei Garmanon come back at some point. It would definitely be something really cool, honestly. Number 4, Moro. Moro is my personal favorite villain in the entirety of the show, without question. This guy is just awesome, and I like a lot of stuff about him. For stars, I really like his backstory and his connection to Sensei Wu with him being the original Master of Wind and basically Moro just being this boy that Wu took in basically and raised up as his son. And when Moro found out that he wasn't the Green Ninja, he wanted not just to get revenge on Wu but also Destiny itself. And this is something pretty interesting. We're seeing Moro trying to just break away from Destiny and basically choose for himself really. It's something pretty interesting, and I like the fact that at the end of the season, we kind of see that Moro was able to have an effect in, in this way, basically, because when it comes to the Cloud Kingdom, according to Fenwick, quote, we must not dabble in their affairs anymore, potentially suggesting that when it comes to the Cloud Kingdom, they may have stopped writing destinies, actually, maybe either for Ninjago or just the realms in general, and so anything can happen, potentially. So that's definitely something pretty interesting. Plus, I also really like the fact that when it comes to Moro, he's a smart villain, and by possessing Lloyd, he gets multiple advantages when battling against the ninja. That is really cool. And I really like Moro's Redemption story, which we got at the end of Season 5, with him deciding to give Sensei Wu the Realm Crystal, and letting himself get dragged down into the water, because he knows that's the only thing he can do in order to make up for all the stuff he did. And I like that they continued on with this during Day of the Departed, actually, with Moro deciding not to kill Sensei Wu and actually decide to help him and the rest of the ninja by telling them about Yang's plan. Like, he gave up his chance to come back, and I think that's something pretty cool to see when it comes to Moro. Like, he became a good guy at the end of Season 5, and he's still that way during Day of the Departed. It's pretty cool, honestly. I doubt we're going to see Moro ever again at some point, but I really, really hope we do. Just in any way, it would be really cool. Number 3. When it comes to a lot of people's top 10 favorite character lists when it comes to Ninjago, they generally have at least one, maybe two ninja allies, just someone who's not necessarily on the team but still helps the ninja out in some way or another. And I decided that I did want to have a character on that list, but I wanted it to be one character who I especially really liked a lot. Except when it came to the ninja allies, there really weren't any of them that I thought were at the level of 10 best characters in the show, honestly. Like, some of them I did think came close, but none of them were really at this level, except for one. There is definitely one ninja ally in particular who I think is easily the best ninja ally in the entirety of the show, and one of the best characters we have ever gotten when it comes to Ninjago. With that being number three, Akita. Without question, I think that Akita is easily the best wild brain character and the best post-movie character we have gotten, honestly. She is just such a great and well done character, honestly. I really like Akita's backstory and how I think it's the most traumatic and just sad backstory in the entirety of the show, honestly. I really like Akita's growth and development that she has over the events of the Ice Chapter with her learning to overcome her trust issues and at the same time and how she's able to help out Lloyd overcome his own trust issues. That was definitely something really cool to see. Yeah, a bunch of the moments with her are just genuinely really well done at night. And I like the fact that when it comes to these moments, they're not like these big action-y moments or anything. They're more like these night nice, quieter moments where she and Lloyd are just interacting with each other. Like, that's definitely something pretty nice to see. I think that her flashback slash focused episode, Last of the Formlings, is the most underrated episode in the entirety of the show. And it is absolutely amazing. And her and Lloyd's bonds and dynamic that they have is 
absolutely amazing and incredible, honestly. It is so great how these two characters were able to just help each other out in this way, just able to overcome their trust issue who's then not end up like Vex, just that's a really, really great thing, and I really like the decision that the writers went with in order to do this sort of thing. And also, I'm going to be honest with you guys, if I didn't have a, have a nostalgia bias for these next two characters that I have on this list, Akita would honestly be my favorite character in the entirety of the show. And just again, she is my favorite ninja ally, my favorite female character we have when it comes to the show, and my personal favorite post-movie character we have gotten. She is just in a league of her own, honestly. She's just amazing. Number two, Lloyd. Lloyd is the green ninja and the main character of the show. And honestly, I really like this guy. I like the whole big mystery that was going on with the green ninja in the earlier days of the show. Just who would this mysterious new character be who would ultimately defeat the Dark Lord? And honestly, I do like the decision of it being Lloyd, actually, who became the green ninja. And it does make sense. He is the son of Garmadon who is the son of the first Spinjitzu Master. It makes sense that he would become the Green Ninja. And I like just all the change that Lloyd's gone through over the events of the show. Both in terms of like actual change with him getting aged up during Season 2, but also just for how Lloyd tends to go through a lot of pain and trauma over the events of the show. Yet despite that, he's able to just move past it all and just he's able to keep on moving forward with his life. And I think that's something pretty cool, honestly. I also think that when it comes to Lloyd's voice actor change that he had during Season 8, it was actually able to help out Lloyd's character in a big way and make him into a pretty well-done character even more. That was definitely something that I liked a lot. And I also really, really liked the decision that the writers went with starting in Season 11, mainly the Ice Chapter, with Lloyd going down the story arc of him finally getting over Harumi and moving on from her after all the pain and trauma she caused him during the events of the Oni Trilogy. I thought that was something pretty cool, honestly. And I definitely like the decision that they went with when it came to the Ice Chapter, actually, of Lloyd having a major role, mainly because when it comes to the instant him having this bond dynamic with Akita, not only was he able to just overcome his own trust issues and just move on, he was also able to help out Akita with her trust issues. And yeah, I said this when it came to Akita section, but again, it bears repeating because, like I said, the bond dynamic that these two have is just absolutely amazing, honestly, and incredible. And I'm interested to see what is going to be happening when it comes to Lloyd during the events of Crystallize. I am definitely looking forward to this, honestly. Number one, Zane. Ever since day one when it came to Ninjago, Zane was always my favorite ninja. Just always from the get-go. And just, I really like Zane. For starters, the guys are robots. And I myself, I really like robots. So this is definitely something really, really cool. Second of all, Rebooted is one of my favorite seasons in the entirety of the show, and with that being a Zane-focused season, that was definitely something pretty cool. Same thing goes when it comes to the Ice Chapter, with Zane technically being the Ice Emperor, that does technically make him a major character when it comes to the Ice Ch East Chapter, and him one of the main characters. And the Ice Chapter is honestly my favorite season in the show, so that was definitely something pretty cool. Plus, I just like a bunch of stuff that's able to happen with Zane when it comes to the show, mainly with him just being a robot and him being in the in situation. That's definitely something pretty interesting with Zane doing stuff like learning more about emotions and what it means to be human. That's definitely something pretty interesting to see. And like I said, when it came into the Akita section, one of the main reasons why Zane's my favorite ninja is honestly because of nostalgia. Zane came in the first ever Ninjago set I ever got, honestly. It was the Ice Dragon attack set all the way back in 2011, and Zane was the ninja who was in that set. I feel like if any other ninja had been in that set, they would have been my favorite character when it comes to the show, but it was Zane. He was in that set, and he became my favorite character just after that. And honestly, I think that's a pretty nice thing, honestly. Just, again, Zane's been my favorite character ever since day one, and just, even to this day, he's still my favorite character when it comes to the show. He is just absolutely amazing and incredible, and just, I cannot wait to see what's going to happen with Zane in the future. And I really, really hope that we get another Zane-focused season. And if it's either, like, another tech-focused season, or maybe a season where the ninja returns to the Neverrealm, and we get to see some more stuff going on when it comes to the Ice Emperor... Either way, I am definitely hooked when it comes to that. And that's pretty much all I got for you guys. And so tell me down below what do you guys think. Who are some of your guys' favorite characters when it comes to the show? And again, thank you guys so much for 100 subscribers. I really could not have done this without you guys. 
Later guys, this is Dimension Master Studios, signing off.